Hey everybody, welcome back to the Fuller Homestead. My name is Brian, happy Wednesday to you. We're gonna be in the shop today doing a building project. I just got in contact with a rabbit tree about 45 minutes away from here, and we're gonna go get some New Zealands from them, three does and one buck. That's gonna be the beginning of our breeding stock as we bring rabbits onto the property. Now they're still being weaned, so I still have about a week and a half yet before we go pick them up, but that gives me enough time to build a stand for our rabbit cages. You may remember from previous videos that I bought five used rabbit cages off of Facebook Marketplace. They still need a little bit of work. I've got to power wash them off. I've got to assemble a few of them and potentially even do a little spray painting to cover up some of the rust areas. But the stand we want to build for four of those is going to be about three and a half feet off the ground. It's going to have four of the rabbit cages in a cluster and it's going to be placed in the chicken run slash compost area slash rabbit area. I think I got all those right. After we start having a few litters of kits, we're obviously gonna need to be building a rabbit tractor so that we can put those babies out on grass before they're ready to process, but that's for a future video. Right now, we need to set up a layout for how we wanna build this and then cut down some of the scrap wood that we have to make the dimensions right for our lumber. Put it all together. And that's our build for today. Let's get started. The first thing that's gonna be helpful as we start sketching this out is to find out exactly the dimensions of our rabbit cages. I believe all five are the same, but we're gonna go ahead and make sure there's one that is fully assembled. This one's partially assembled. So we'll use that as kind of our measuring stick to see how large they are. So here's the cage that was already assembled that we bought and our measurements look like four feet by two feet and I believe, not that this really matters, but yeah, all of our dimensions around the edges are two feet. So four feet by two feet, we'll check this other one to kind of make sure that all of these are exactly the same size. Just by eyeballing, I can't imagine this is gonna be any different. Yeah. It appears that all the cages are four feet by two feet. So if I'm using four of those, pretty easy math there. We're gonna have a four by eight structure that's gonna hold all four of those together. We obviously are gonna need bracing underneath so that the edges are covered. The previous owner of these cages had used some cattle panel underneath to give it a little more structural stability. I believe he had these hanging and so after a while, they were sagging at the bottom, and so he put these down there. And I believe that all of them still have the cattle panel on there. Some of them need to be tightened up, but other than that, uh, I think we're gonna keep that because it'll also add a nice ridge to rest on on our frame. All right, moved over here to the workbench to draw this out. Heads up, not a big drawer. Now, looking from the ceiling down, our frame is going to be four feet by eight feet. This is obviously not to scale. Okay, and then we're gonna need some bracing right here so that all four of our rabbit hutches will have a place to rest on the lips of all of those. Okay, so that'll be from the top down. Now, if we're looking to the side, here is the tabletop. If you've seen Joel Salatin's rack and house design, that's what we're going for, although the dimensions of mine are gonna be different because my cage dimensions are different. So we're still gonna put some legs in here, kind of like a ping pong table setup. And we'll have bracing there, bracing between those others on the outside there, going something like this. Once again, not a great drawer. And then we're going to have a pole that will go up each side here that will house, now Salatin's design, oh, let me put the rabbit hutches in here so you can see those. So there's two on the outside, two on the other side, so it's too deep there. Salatin's design has chicken wire going attached to these and the reason being so that the chickens don't jump up from the ground, get on top of the rabbit hutches and poop down in there on top of the rabbits basically. I toyed with some bird netting because um, I have some leftover of that and I thought maybe I'll save the chicken wire, but uh, we'll see. It it'll either be bird netting or it will be chicken wire, one of the two, to keep those um, chickens from flying up that high. Okay, so let's get started. So this is leftover scrap wood from when we were building the chicken tractor and I believe we can make this work. We do need to cut up some of these pieces, not only because it's too large, but because there's some dry rot in some of this stuff. They're mainly two by sixes. There's a two by 10 over there. The post pieces that I have over here are not long enough for legs. So I am gonna have to go out to the shed and get another piece of uh, treated lumber for the post, which is not a big deal. But we do need to start cutting down some of this and see what's still good and what really needs to be burned.
As I'm cutting this, I'm trying to keep in mind that not only do I want this to be sturdy, but I also want it to be movable. I want it to be where myself and my son could pick this up and rotate it to a different area of the run or when we need to move it out of the way to get a tractor in. The pieces that I have here are one and three quarter by two and a half. So I think that's gonna be good for the long eight foot sections. These are almost 11 feet. So I'm not gonna have enough for the sides, but I will have enough to keep for a little bit of bracing later. I'm gonna go ahead and put these to the side right now and then cut some more on the table saw before I get to the miter saw to cut up the specific pieces. Now we have the bones of the frame laid out on the assembly table, four feet by eight feet, two and a half inch wide depth on the outside of the frame, plenty of room for the cages to rest, so that's good. I still have to put the braces in here. None of this, by the way, is attached. It's just laid out here on the table so I can see how it looks. And yes, I could have done this on the ground and it probably would have been a little better. So when we put the legs on, I don't have to pull this all off, but uh, I wanted you to be able to see it. And quite frankly, I was trying to save my knees. We're gonna measure this out, screw it all in, measure out the other braces in the center there and then start working on the legs. And there's the basic frame layout as we had done on our drawing, just to make sure that we've got all the quadrants. All right, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside, take a lunch break, come back out and work on doing the legs and bracing for those. Okay, so we're back from our lunch break and looking at the frame here where I wanna put the legs, I think our best bet is gonna be to come in about two feet from the outside. These are four foot section blocks. And so if I split that down the middle, giving two feet on each side for the rabbit cages to kind of be stabilized, I think is gonna be my best bet. So I've decided to go with the two by six for the actual legs without chopping it up or anything. And I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. The main one being stability. I've got more points of contact with the outside of the frame. So that's gonna keep it a little more rigid. And then also we'll have more surface area actually on the ground. So two feet in from the inside, five and a half inches on the ground on each side, give it a little bit more and then we'll just brace it from there. So the basic uprights are done. This is not, I'll admit, the best bracing in the world, but it is a brace. It will be a lot better once we get these sides done. The idea is to put a brace going from eh, about there all the way down to the corner here. I thought about doing, you know, a cross on this side. We'll see what it feels like once I get one up there. So I think we're just gonna leave it at the one brace here. Now for the fun part of getting this off the table, putting it onto the bucket of the front loader and taking it out to the coop area. I wasn't quite
quite as hard as I thought it was going to be, so that's good news. But uh, the, the weight, I think, is going to be fine for two people to be able to move that around when they need to. Admittedly, it's a little taller than I kind of thought in my head, but when you consider that the top of the cage is only going to be, you know, two feet high, it's really not that tall. I think whoever is helping me can get enough leverage on that end to be able to help me to move, and then also if they needed to come out here and do some chores with the rabbits, they could without much of a problem. Looking out right now, I was gonna move it, but looking up at the sky, looks like we might be getting some rain. In fact, I few, here are a few drops. We had some a little bit earlier this morning. I don't believe this is gonna last long at all. So I think what we might do is go ahead and let this storm pass over, or this little cloud, I should say. And then I'll go grab the tractor and we'll put it on the front load or tie it down lift it up, take it out to where it's going to be resting and see if we can get a good spot to level it up at. Definitely need some more work on leveling. Not only is this a pretty significant incline, but it's also got all kinds of divots and everything on the ground. It's not a flat incline, but at least it's over here now. So that's one step closer to the rabbits. Well, I checked on my J clips and they are waiting at the Pangburn post office. Apparently, according to the email that I got, they tried to deliver them and were unsuccessful. I don't know how that was possible, but anyway, so I'll have to go pick those up tomorrow morning which is fine, but what it does mean is that I won't be able to fix all the rabbit cages, attach them together and put them on the stand. And then I wanted to make sure I get those mounted before I put up the upright. So for today, what's left to do is gonna be, we're gonna move the chicken tractor as soon as the boys get home. Whoops, I got chicks trying to get out. Hang on a second. Let me show you what they're doing here. So I'd lifted the lid just to get ready to take out the feeders and the water so that we could move them. But they are seeing a little bit of daylight there and they're like, huh, well, look at that. All right, gang, well, that's gonna do it for today's video. I'm sorry we didn't get the project totally completed, but I will go and pick up those J clips first thing tomorrow morning. And then at that point, I should be able to attach all of the rabbit cages together and then I'll be able to put them on the frame. Then we can put the post on the outside and get all that, that said and done. Um, like I said, it is about to rain here, it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and close everything up, wait for the boys to get home from school, which should be any second now, and, uh, and we're gonna call it. So thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for following along. We continue to have new subscribers, so welcome to the channel. As always, we ask that if you are viewing this for the first time and you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Give us a thumbs up, click that bell for notifications on when our next video will be happening. Our plan is to do a video every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every now and then things get a little screwy and we're not able to do that. Just as a heads up, I don't know what Friday's video is gonna look like because I'm heading out of town tomorrow, Thursday, to drive up to Missouri to get ready for the Homestead Expo in Marshfield. It'll be a long day tomorrow as I get to go watch my youngest son play in his first football game. And then as soon as that game's over, I jump in the truck and I drive the four hours to Missouri. So I'll get there a little after midnight-ish, I think, and, uh, and camp out. So I'll try to do a little bit of footage and get something out on Friday. But if not, we'll try to do maybe some YouTube lives or Facebook lives if I can figure out how to do that and, uh, and see what happens. But anyway, I hope that next week, if nothing else, I'll have a lot of cool footage from the Homestead Expo, be able to share some of what I learned, and then we'll get back to projects here. So have a great rest of your Wednesday. We'll talk to you soon.